everyone. Thank you very, very much, and welcome to The Tonight Show. Let's get to the news and jokes. Well, guys, this morning, the Commission on Presidential Debates, which I'm assuming is just a bunch of guys with bird masks and butt paddles, <laughs> made a big announcement about the next presidential debate. Listen to this. The commission just announcing that the next debate will be entirely virtual as the president still battles COVID. The candidates will participate from separate remote locations. Yeah, a virtual debate with two guys in their 70s and a moderator in his 60s. I'm sure that'll run real smooth. <laughs> and to make it even more annoying, they're going to have Trump and Biden chomp on baby carrots while they talk. <laughs> A virtual debate with Trump? Come on, how great would that be? It's like, Melania, what's the Wi Fi password? <laughs> One, two, three, four, same as nuke codes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a virtual debate seems like a safe idea. During a phone call this morning on Fox Business, Trump was asked about it, and here's what he had to say. The CPD, the Commission on Presidential Debates, announcing this morning uh, that the second presidential debate will be virtual. Are you saying you're not going to participate? No, I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. That's not what debating's all about. You sit behind a computer and do a debate. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Trump says he won't waste time. Then he went back to chatting on Fox Business for 55 minutes. <laughs> 55 minutes. Halfway through, Maria Barromo texted the host of Fox and Friends, like, how do you make him stop? <laughs> Seriously, the call was so exhausting, Maria went online and booked four days at Walter Reed. <laughs> After Trump stated that he would not waste his time, Joe Biden announced that he was backing out of the debate as well. It's like a group text. Once one person bails on brunch, the floodgates open and everybody jumps shit. They're like, oh, I got something too. Yeah, yeah, I, sorry, well, I forgot about that. It's too bad for the people who were going to speak at the town hall because they were really looking forward to having their questions ignored on national television. <laughs> Anyway, back to Trump's phone call. Maria asked the president how he's doing, and it was clear that Trump is having a tough time staying in quarantine. Listen to this. First of all, I think I'm better. I went, went to a point where I, I'd love to do a rally tonight. I wanted to do one last night. A rally? He's actually considering that? Trump's aides were like, you got a boss, then put him in a room with 5,000 cardboard cutouts. <laughs> Later in the interview, Trump had a soundbite that I found very interesting. Uh, check this out. And remember this, when you catch it, you get better, and then you're immune. You know, I, as soon as so everything goes away from me, you're me immune. You and, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I've never felt better. My body is a, is a finely tuned uh, Swiss clock. Everything is in perfect working order. So happy you're better. What? <laughs> Trump suddenly turned into every grandpa when you ask how they're feeling. What? <laughs> also, minor detail, there's no such thing as being immune to COVID. After he said that, Dr. Fauci poured himself a big antibody cocktail, minus the antibody. <laughs> Towards the end of the interview, Maria had a question about Trump's current COVID status, and he gave her a pretty interesting answer. Listen to this. You're feeling good. Have you been tested recently? Can you tell us anything else no, about I'll, I'll your condition? No, I'll be tested very soon, but I'm, I'm essentially very clean. Uh, essentially, th this is kind of a binary situation. You, e you either have COVID or you don't. Doctors don't say, good news, you don't have COVID anymore, more or less, <laughs> per se. It's not very comforting. You don't see a celebrity coming out of rehab like, all good, I'm essentially clean. Well, guys, last night was, of course, the big vice presidential debate between Mike Pence and Kamala Harris, and everyone's still talking about it, because a fly actually landed on Pence's head. Watch this. It's, it's a great insult to the men and women who serve in law enforcement. Part of a pattern of Donald Trump's. You, he was... <laughs> At that point, every American was like, is that on him or on my TV? Like, what's, what's, right. <laughs> You know vice presidential debates are boring when a fly shows up and the entire internet loses its mind. <laughs> Meanwhile, a bunch of other flies off camera were like, oh my God, I can't believe you actually did it! You're a legend, dude! Epic! I can't believe you did it! Kamala Harris was probably sitting there thinking, I've been strong and commanding and all anyone's gonna be talking about is that stupid fly. 
Yeah, that was a tough moment for Pence, although it's still not as bad as the last vice presidential debate when a barn owl attacked Tim Kaine. <laughs> Yep, Pence had a rough night, as if the fly wasn't bad enough. People also noticed there was something going on with his eyeball. Look at, look at his eye. <laughs> oh. yeah, he's the head of the coronavirus task force. Not really a great look when you're covered in bugs and bleeding out of your eye. <laughs> yep, last night's debate was an epic battle between side eye and red eye. It's a tough break for Pence. It's hard to shake the reputation of being robotic when you show up looking like the Terminator. <laughs> also, can you believe Kamala Harris had to stare at that for 90 minutes? As if she wasn't under enough pressure, she had to debate the Bond villain with the leaky eye. <laughs> Be very careful, Mr. Bond. People are worried about Pence because pink eye is a possible symptom of coronavirus. Even scarier today, Pence's temperature shot all the way up to 84.6. <laughs> Well, a lot of people also noticed that Pence kept interrupting Harris, but she wasn't having it. Watch this. This is important. Susan, I, and I, I want to add, but if, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. Up. Raise taxes on anybody who makes less than $400,000 a year. He said he's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Well, wait, wait. I'm speaking. If you don't mind letting me finish, we can Please. then have a conversation, okay? Please. Okay. In 1864... Well, I'd like you to answer the question. No, Mr. Yes. Vice President, I'm Please. speaking. Please. I'm speaking. Okay. <laughs> Compared to the presidential debate, that wasn't too bad. Although, that's like comparing a five-star restaurant to a Waffle House at 3 a.m. <laughs> that's right, there were a lot of memorable moments during the debate, and there are plenty of jokes to be made. But if it's all right, I want to take a moment to say something serious about democracy. Is that okay? You asking me? <laughs> I mean, it's your show, man. You can do, it, do whatever you want. America <laughs> is at an inflection point right now. And we as a nation have to come together to make a choice. <laughs> um, Jimmy, you got something on, on your... Uh... This country <laughs> needs to ask itself some hard questions, like, what is America? Who is freedom? And when is liberty? <laughs> that didn't even make... You know what? I don't care, man. <laughs> just, just keep doing your thing. So get out there <laughs> and be the change you want to see in the world. Jimmy. Uh, yeah, what's up, Tariq? Something you want to tell me? I just wanted to say that was... <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> you trim your beard or something? You, you look different. Nah, man. It's a <laughs> squirrel on my head. <laughs> Well, listen to this. I saw that the governor of California has a new recommendation for residents to safely eat at restaurants during the pandemic. The governor's office tweeted out saying, when you're eating out at a restaurant, to keep your mask on in between bites of food. The tweet even shows an image of someone wearing a mask, then not wearing a mask, taking a bite, and then putting the mask back on again. So you have to pull your mask down, you take a bite, then you put your mask back on, you chew, swallow, then repeat. Or you could just fill your mask with food and eat like a horse. <laughs> Even Donald Trump was like, What? <laughs> what? Well, this is interesting. I saw that starting in November, Singapore will offer cruises to nowhere. So they're basically just going to go out, float, and come back. So if you're tired of being cooped up at home, try it in a smaller room that rocks back and forth. <laughs> Normally, if someone invites you on a cruise to nowhere, you're like, oh, okay, cool, I'm about to be murdered. <laughs> Seriously, I'm pretty sure Cruise to Nowhere is the name of every Dateline episode. <laughs> they had the perfect marriage. Then they booked two tickets on a cruise to nowhere. <laughs> Speaking of traveling, I saw that Hotels.com is offering a stay in a pretty interesting destination. Hotel.com is offering a unique escape. After casting your early ballot, you can enter a contest to live under a rock during election week. It's a man-made cave built 50 feet below ground. <laughs> the website's great. It's like, uh, we got a king-size bed, you got a jacuzzi, mole people. 
And finally, a cafe in Prague is getting a lot of attention for its new dessert. Check it out. There's a cafe in Prague which is looking to, well, lighten the mood amid a slump in business because of the pandemic. Owners debuted a dessert cake shaped like the novel coronavirus in an effort to draw customers. Yeah, they're really into the whole theme. When you order it, the server puts it in his mouth and spits it back into yours like a baby bird. <laughs> And on and on and on. Uh, I said. And it's on and on.